Hi everyone, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Well, today I wanna to talk all about a flower that's very close to my heart, and that, of course, is the gladiola. I wanna share with you varieties that I've grown in past seasons, and also new varieties that I'm really excited to trial this year. And I think I'm going to put these gladiolas into different classifications, a love it, leave it, or can't live without it list. And let me know which varieties really speak to you, your personal personality and your taste because we're all different bring something different and unique and special to the table. But you know, I really wanted to make this video because have you noticed that, especially when it comes to gladiolas, that sometimes the pictures on the suppliers' websites are a little bit different than what you get in real life? Maybe it's just the lighting was a little bit off. Maybe it's a studio photograph, an old photograph. But oftentimes, specifically with gladiolas, I will grow on a variety and I will often be more drawn to it or more pushed away from it when I actually see it in person. So I was really thankful last year, and I don't think I told you guys this, but I actually grew on a lot of Longfield Gardens gladiolas for them in order to photograph them for their website. That way everyone can really see what they look like growing in a natural space with morning light, evening light, midday light. And so what I really wanna do in this video is kind of show you the photograph that I was given at the beginning of the season, what I thought some of these glads were gonna look like, and then, my wonderful experience growing them and seeing that so many of them are even more beautiful in real life, in natural lighting, and hopefully inspire you to grow some new varieties as well. So let's just start right at the beginning of the growing season and work our way through the year. And I'll also talk you through a succession of gladiolas that I don't think worked as far as my timing went, but I absolutely love that variety. But to start off the year, the first one to bloom was a new variety to me called Lumiere. And when I first saw the picture of Lumiere, I thought I wasn't really going to like it. It was classified as a hot pink with mauve and purple. And it was all of those colors, but the wonderful thing was is that that hot pink leaned a little bit more towards blue than orange. So it was more of a blue pink than an orange pink. And that makes such a significant difference, especially when you're looking at a photograph, you're seeing a pink and it appears to have some kind of undertones of orange or yellow in it versus a pink that has undertones of blue and purple. So that was really one where I thought I wasn't going to like the gladiola and maybe I was gonna leave it, but at the end of the day, I absolutely loved it. And most importantly to me, something really special happened with the Lumiere gladiolas was that I ended up having a hummingbird build a nest in the lilac tree that's over by the raised beds. And that hummingbird would come and visit the Lumiere gladiolas constantly. I was able to stand right there with my big camera and my zoom lens and get pictures of her video. So to know that she was so attracted to that hot color palette, even if it didn't speak to me personally or if I was concerned, maybe that it wasn't going to speak to my customers. At the end of the day, I didn't even care. It was all about that beautiful hummingbird and giving her what she needed to stay in my garden. So the next one on our list is called Costa or maybe Costa, but I'm just going to call it Costa. And this is one that I can't live without. As a matter of fact, I could cry thinking about this gladiola because it's so absolutely beautiful. And I was trying to write a description for it and I thought, you know why this flower and this color in particular is so beautiful? Because I can't really think of any other flower that is that particular color. So it's a light lavender. It gets a little bit darker lavender towards the edges. So the very edges are dark purple. Then you get that light lavender and then the very center of the flower is almost a white, but still a little, little bit of violet in there but the petals are like silk. I mean, they have this beautiful sheen to them. Not all gladiolas are like that. Some are very um, flat, almost look like a matte photograph versus a glossy photograph. Costa is really kind of your glossy photograph in terms of a gladiola. I think too, you know, this would work for so many things, even a wedding. You know, we get hung up on certain colors for weddings, but why not this beautiful light lavender? I just think it's just absolutely phenomenal. If I had to choose one gladiola to grow henceforth, it would definitely be Costa. Can't live without it. 
Now, next up is Espresso Gladiola, which is also on my can't live without it list because once again, this variety of Gladiola has that beautiful silky satiny sheen to its petals. You know, what color is it? Is it black? Is it brown? Is it burgundy? It's all those colors at the same time. When it was in bud form, it really seemed more that it was going to open a lot more black or chocolate. But then once it actually opened and the sun hit it, that's where that burgundy color really came through. And one other thing that's really interesting about espresso, since it is such a dark colored gladiola, the stamens really appear almost like living glitter inside each flower head. So to me, this gladiola feels really alive, really because of the stamen being so prevalent in the flower. So I can't say enough good things about espresso, but the one thing and a note to myself is that I planted it too early on in my successions. I think I had it blooming in June. It would have made so much more sense to have it blooming in September. So just a note to yourself if you are planting in successions for certain colors, it's definitely a fall feel. And so that might be something to take into consideration. So next up is a variety that personally, I think I would leave it and not grow it again, but it may be something that appeals to you and maybe it's something that you're looking for. But this variety is called Performer. It's basically just a standard purple variety. It does have white streaking towards the center of the bloom. And this is part of the reason why I didn't really love it. Because if you've ever dealt with gladiola strips, you know that basically when gladiola strips set in, they cause white streaking on both the blooms and the leaves. And even though my performers were not suffering from a severe thrip infestation because I was testing them for that, they kind of had the appearance that they were just because they have natural white streaking. Now I'm wondering to myself, if I never had a problem with thrips in past years, would I have even thought of this? Maybe not. Maybe I would look at Performer and think, that's a beautiful purple gladiola with beautiful white streaks or a beautiful white star coming out from the center. Probably I would, but I've been so personally traumatized by having gladiola strips in the past that this is one that I'm just gonna leave it and save myself the heartache of looking at something that kind of reminds me of having gladiola strips. And one other thing to note, and please let me know if you've grown Performer, did your flowers look like this? These petals were matte. I mean, there was no, uh, there was no way I could say they had a satiny sheen, a sheen of any kind, the glossy. I couldn't say anything like that about the petals. They were really just matte. So I think it left something to be desired. And I think there's so many good purple glads out there to choose from. I might just leave Performer off the list. I'm not sure I ever showed this in a video because I had it growing in our front garden, which I rarely show just because it's so loud out there. But basically it's a purple gladiola that also has white in the exterior petals. And then as you go in towards the center of the gladiola, it has kind of these dark purple splotches watches. So it's really quite an interesting gladiola and very, very eye catching, I would say. So I'm not really sure whether I should say I want to love or leave this gladiola because if what I was going for was really an eye, cla eye catching gladiola that really drew you in. I mean, if this gladiola was planted in mass in a garden, I'm sure you would walk directly towards that gladiola to see what was going on with it. There's really nothing subtle about it, mainly because of that dark purple throat, I think. But, you know, I'm not, I'm undecided. You know, what do you think about Vista? Would you love it? Would you leave it? You can't live without it. It definitely had beautiful satiny petals, more glossy petals, so that I liked. I also liked, I had it backed up with just some Rubecchia and the contrast of that yellow back behind the beautiful Vista. I did think that really was kind of a beautiful kind of blend of colors, but yeah, I'm not sure. Let me know what you think about that one. So the next one on my list is one that I definitely cannot live without. You might recognize it from a video I did where I think we took bouquets over to the hospital, but the name of this gladiola is called Zamora. And this gladiola is so gorgeous. It's a tricolor gladiola. 
just like Vista, but the colors on this, it's so it's um, primarily a pale pink. Then it has yellow. When do you ever see that? Yellow next. And then kind of a raspberry center. And you might think that those colors might seem strange together or maybe even off-putting, but to me, I just thought they were beautiful. They worked. They drew me in without being so distracting that I felt pulled over to a certain section. They were just kind of this beautiful drift in the background and they just worked with so many other things that I was growing. So many of my dahlias and my lilies they worked with being in that beautiful soft pink color. The petals were so beautiful, so satiny, so silky, no issue with thrips at all on that particular variety. And it really does seem like when it comes to thrips, and this is just me, just my personal experience, this is not like backed by science, but from what I see, the dark purples and the reds especially seem to really get attacked by thrips first. Does anyone else think that or is it just me? But things like, of course, the white, you know, like white prosperity, you're not gonna notice it on. Rarely do I notice any issues on like the pinks, the light yellows, the light, the light purples that kind of lean towards white in the center. So I wonder if there is anything to that. Let me know if that's just me out here saying it or if anyone else has a similar experience with the gladiolus thrips. Now let's get into a few gladiola varieties that I've had for multiple seasons that didn't come from Longfield. So the next two varieties, I think I purchased maybe four or five years ago from Aldi's. So Aldi's does sell gladiolas and a lot of times kind of after maybe a few weeks have passed, they'll put them 50% off. Then sometimes they'll put them 75% off. So you really get an amazing deal on a ton of gladiolas. And from them, I got White Prosperity, which I have planted over in the front garden. And it's really a beautiful, pure white gladiola. I would say the stamens on that one are maybe gray or black, really beautiful. So a nice contrast to the white of the petals and also quite tall, quite a tall gladiola, taller than a lot of my other ones. So if you're looking for a white gladiola with satiny petals, definitely check out White Prosperity. And I think I forgot to say, I think when it comes to White Prosperity, I love it, but I probably could live without it. Now, the next on the list is one that I've had for quite a number of years. It's called Priscilla. Apparently, Priscilla is one of the top 10 gladiolas in the cup flower trade. I think I don't like it anymore. And maybe I've just grown it so many years, I've kind of just moved on from it and I want to see something different in my garden. Maybe it just doesn't blend with the colors that I have in the garden as much anymore. But Priscilla is basically a pink gladiola technically, but it really has a lot of yellow in it. So it kind of has a dark pink edge, bleeds toward kind of this light pink and then bleeds toward yellow. So in a way, when I think about it, it has similar colors to Zamora, but very different looks. I mean, Zamora, the pink is what is predominant, but with Priscilla, there's just so much yellow coming at you from the center. It's a little bit loud for my particular taste. It's kind of a loud gladiola, even though it's pink. So let me know what you think about Priscilla, but I think in years to come, I'll probably leave it. So the last one I'll talk about for this part of the list, ones that I've already grown, is a variety that was called Green Star, but ended up to be something totally different. And I'm gonna put a picture on the screen and let me know if you can ID this gladiola because I'm really not sure what it actually is. Because Green Star is supposed to be a completely green, kind of like a candy apple green gladiola. Well, the gladiola that grew from these corms had a green center, but it was definitely edged with orange. So very, very interesting. And you know, where in the season does this gladiola belong? I'm not sure. You know, with that orange in it, does it say fall? But with the green and the brightness and the vibrancy, does it say midsummer? I'm not sure, I don't think I'll grow it again. I'm not really sure what the variety actually is. So help me out if you recognize this gladiola and you can tell me what the cultivar is.
So moving on to the new varieties that I'm going to be trying this year, the first one, I couldn't be more excited about it. It's called Cream Perfection. So when I went to place my order from Longfield this year, of course I went to the Gladiolus page first to see if they had any new varieties. I saw a few, but when I saw Cream Perfection, it was like the heavens had parted and the angels were singing. You know, I felt like my grandma was kind of looking down from heaven saying, this one is really special, get it? Because it is, you know, and there's such a stigma with gladiolus that they're outdated, gearish, over the top, you know, that they're for funerals or just that they're ugly. I mean, I even have heard people say that gladiolus are ugly and I think they're just not growing the right varieties. You know, we have to get these new varieties in front of people to show them that they do come in these beautiful, subtle shades that you can use them in so many interesting, versatile, and valuable ways. Now I have to read you the description on the website of Cream Perfection because I thought it was so beautifully written. So it says, Cream Perfection's blossoms are the color of buttermilk with crimped petals that display just a whisper of peach pink around the edges. Now, doesn't that make you wanna grow this flower without even seeing a picture of it? I mean, it makes me wanna grow it. You know, it's just wonderful when people can kind of describe a flower and you can really get a sense of it without seeing the photograph. So anyway, I'll be really excited to grow this variety this year and to share it with you here on YouTube. Now the next one is called Katharina, and I hope I'm saying that right, but this one has such interesting petals. It looks to me as if a carnation metagladiola got together and had a baby and her name was Katharina. This is really how the petals look. They have ruffling like I've never seen before. And a lot of times gladiolas will be described as having ruffled petals, but it's not quite like this. These are really, really, really ruffly, almost have kind of a ballerina skirt look to them, like a tulle skirt being gathered together. It is pink and white, and I think it'll just be absolutely gorgeous to have this in the garden. So the next variety I saw on the website, and it looked really interesting, and I was kind of on the fence about it. There was only one photograph of it, it's called Andrews and it has multiple colors in it. It has kind of a lavender pink, a lighter pink, and a white when I look at it. It almost looks as if maybe someone took like watercolors and kind of started painting the petals just kind of willy-nilly all around the place. But I really think that this is one that I'm gonna to have to grow it in person, and then we can kind of all see what we think. I think we're either going to feel like we can't live without it, or maybe we're not going to like it. I can't tell from the picture whether the petals are satiny or not, and I can't really tell if I'm gonna feel like it looks like it has thrip damage. Maybe it's gonna to lean towards that way, but maybe not. So we'll give it a try and we'll see what we think about Andrews. So the next one I purchased, because I think I have some of this in my garden or something very similar and I really like it and I'm trying to kind of bulk up my supply. So it's called Sugar Plum. They're just kind of calling it a pink glad. To me, it's definitely hot pinky purple and just a single color glad, at least to my eye, not having grown this particular variety. But I remember one time we were walking around the garden, I think it was maybe a garden tour, and I pulled up this glad that had fallen over and it was gorgeous, you know, and I was kind of looking for something similar and I think sugar plum might just be the answer to what that glad was that we saw in the garden one day. So let's give it a try and see if we love it, leave it, or can't live without it. Now last on my list is one called Isabella and I chose Isabella in particular to plant at the end of the season and I thought it would pair beautifully with espresso. The way it looks to me is similar to espresso without kind of that chocolate in its petals. It appears to be more kind of a true burgundy, but once again, you can see its beautiful stamens against the darkness of the petals, which I really love. And I think having more fall colors to play with is only gonna benefit me in terms of succession planting. So I'm really excited to grow that one. I think there's only one picture of this one on the website. So once again, just so excited to grow it in person and see what it really looks like in a real garden setting. 
Well, I hope this video was enjoyable to watch. Let us know if you're growing any new or interesting varieties of gladiolas. Also, would you let us know if you've grown any gladiolas that you wouldn't grow again and why? I think the more information we can gather, the better, and I'm always looking for new varieties to try. And also to be quite frank, to maybe avoid, especially if you're limited on space, you really wanna grow something that you're gonna love, right? You really, you really wanna invest in plant material, in bulbs, corms, tubers, roots, what have you, that's gonna really give you the most bang for your buck and the most joy out there in the garden. So guys, I wanna wish you a great day and of course, happy gardening. Bye.